Booze, gas, big pharma, beef farmers. Every industry has an interest in what this lot does. But some people get their ear easier than most. Lobbyists. When was the last time that you met with a lobbyist? Who were they and what did they want? I certainly have interacted with people who I know to be lobbyists. No specifics there, and there's no requirement for it. The unregulated industry has unregulated access. Most of it happens behind closed doors. Lobbyists even have swipe card access, like staff do, to the parliamentary buildings. The PM wants that axed. My view is that they should go through the front door like every other New Zealander. Despite just two weeks ago Chris Hipkins saying there was not a sausage to worry about. I don't think that lobbyists necessarily get preferred access. Hipkins today eating humble pie, telling lobbyists the gig is up, calling on the industry to come up with a voluntary code of conduct. And he's instructed the Ministry of Justice to investigate whether there's a need to formally regulate the industry. Looking at the international examples, New Zealand's a bit of an outlier and not having anything in that space. National supports these first few tentative steps. We'd like to see it go a bit further. Uh, we think a compulsory stand-down period for former ministers. Influence on government from the outside has come into sharp focus following revelations Stuart Nash communicated sensitive cabinet conversations with his donors. Today, Nash announced in a Facebook post he'll leave politics at this year's election. I made it clear to him that it was his decision to make and his decision to communicate. As Nash articulated his exit, the Prime Minister announced the investigation into his conduct will look at all texts, emails, WhatsApp and letters with any of his declared donors. If I wasn't worried at all, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be having the current review that we're having and Stuart Nash wouldn't have lost his job. It won't look at Nash's communications with any Labour Party donors. This is about making sure we're getting a result in a relatively um, short period of time and identifying where the risk is. The government choosing a high speed but low political risk investigation. Well, OK, Jenna, what's caused this turnaround from Chris Hipkins on lobbying? It's almost as if they had a scandal and needed to reclaim the transparency narrative. The Stuart Nash story did compound all of the concerns that were raised a couple of weeks back around lobbying, and those two things combined were painting a pretty murky picture of the movings and shakings in Wellington. It's hoped this will run the Windex over the lobbying industry, perhaps starting with lobbying firms listing their clients on their websites voluntarily as the first step before that more fulsome set of rules comes from the the Ministry of Justice next year that could include a compulsory register or stand down periods, that sort of thing. Uh, the voluntary code of conduct does have a bit of a fox building its own hen house vibe about it, but it was probably the easiest way to shift the onus off the government onto the lobbying industry and do it quickly. That's really important because so much of Chris Hipkins' likability is linked to trust. It is his upper hand against Christopher Luxon and both the Stuart Nash saga and this lobbying story threatened to chip away at that honest, chippy brand he was building. Yeah, absolutely. Jenna Lynch, live for us at Parliament. Thanks very much for the analysis.